What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's having a good morning. It is February 17th. Right now it's 8.27 a.m. It is Friday. I'm not live streaming today. If you were on the live stream yesterday, you know that my kids are not in school today. It's a teacher work day, so they're home, so it's going to be very difficult for me to stay on the screen for a long period of time. Uh, I got some activities planned for them this morning, which we're going to start cracking on here in a minute. But I wanted to come on. I am going to do some trading um, and wanted to talk about the markets for a minute and um, just kind of see what we got going on today. Um, you're going to notice I've got a little bit of a different setup. Went with a dark mode today, a little bit easier on the eyes. Um, and I like it. I like it. I like the way it's feeling. Uh, let's blow up this floor. What do we got going on today? Well, holy smokes. Uh, we've been in this up channel. You can see it down here. Boom, 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 boom. Up channel. Came into a bull flag type pattern where we came into a slight down channel. Broke to the upside on it. Now we've fallen back into this channel. Why has this happened? Um, I would suspect a couple things. Uh, one is earnings. Earnings were the last couple weeks. A lot of tech stocks reported earnings. And a lot of this buying that we see going on in here, particularly in this breakout, or folks buying the news, selling the rumor on earnings, which if you don't know what that is, typically a lot of stocks that are going to report earnings and they're expected to beat expectations, people are going to start buying up those stocks in the run-up to earnings. They buy the stock, the stock pops on good earnings or good guidance, and then uh, it fades out after that. So a lot of this was on that. Uh, I was also playing that game. I got DoorDash yesterday. I don't know if anybody, if you're on the live stream, we talked about that DoorDash that thing popped um, up to around 75. I think our cost average on that was $66.10, and it popped up to 74 after market. Um, so that was a nice little return. I'm going to start talking more about stocks too. We are not going to day trade stocks on the channel. We're just going to talk about stocks, setups that are coming into play. I don't day trade stocks. Um, I'll do certain plays on a couple different stocks at a time, like Tesla was a big one a couple weeks ago when that thing dropped down to 100 now it's up over $200. Um, so certain stocks are coming in play at certain times, and we'll talk about those on the channel more uh, as well um, um, you know, in the future. But uh, we will only actively day trade futures um, on the channel. So that being said, what do we got going on today? Earnings seasons is, is kind of coming dry, uh, is running running its course here. Market just opened. Um, earning season has uh, kind of run its course, and um, so what we're getting now are those inflation numbers that I think we got last week. CPI was running hot. Uh, PPI yesterday was running hot. Um, some of those inflation numbers are now starting to sink in. Uh, the Fed has come out and issued warnings as well that they'll get aggressive if they need to to curb inflation. So what we saw yesterday um, is we see some selling coming in now, uh, particularly um, um, you know, towards the end of the day yesterday, uh, we saw uh, sellers start to kind of gain back control, like we just showed on the four hour. We've dropped back into that channel. You can see the selling going on here, um, and we've dropped lower. It's looking bearish today. Big flat, big red flag coming in yesterday. We gapped down on the open uh, yesterday afternoon. That being said, I'm seeing positive delta. I'm seeing aggressive buying. We're positive three thousand delta in the morning. When I came in this morning, I looked at the chart. I was expecting Delta to be negative 3,000 when I was looking at price action. Um, and, you know, Delta is positive. It's conflicting uh, conflicting uh, things going on here where I've got positive Delta, positive 3,000 Delta, but we are red on the day and we are trading, uh, well, right at VWAP, really. So we're going to have to let it build some structure, move around a little bit. I talk about that every morning, but it really, that really is the case. My best trades come after the open. We let things settle down and uh, try to figure out what it's doing. Uh, yesterday, we traded the open on the live stream, got burned on it. Um, price eventually came to where we thought it was going to go. And then, uh, you, you know, but we got stopped out in the process of that. So you get chopped up in it uh, sometimes. Eventually, we did find a good, nice, good setup where we were trading a really nice up channel um, on the morning. I don't know if that's still up on my chart or not. No, nah, I don't see it. But it was over here, this nice little up channel that had formed um, in the morning. We were trading that uh, on the live stream um, and really went risk off because I got chopped up in this mess right here. I went long. Uh, and it popped, stopped me out as it broke lower, and eventually we did just rip up. So that's that's the way it goes with trading futures contracts. Very risky. Um, I am, of course, not a financial advisor. You want to make sure you're doing your own research. 
uh, you can see here the market's open. And do not take advice from me. Uh, do your own research. Um, and this is just kind of showing you how I trade and how you know you might be able to incorporate some of my techniques into your own trading. Let's look at big book map. I like using book map to try to figure out high levels of liquidity where price might be able to get sucked into. It's also a nice order flow tool. We can see aggressive buying and selling in a more visual way than trying to read the tape, which is very difficult, very difficult for me. Looking for some high levels, maybe up to the upside that I might want to get pulled into. We got 74 orders sitting up here, 56 here. Uh, let's see if we see any to the downside. Looking for like a big red band of liquidity, and there she is down here at 320, 300, uh, 300. Um, so yeah, 300 might be a target for it. Um, I don't know though that that you know positive delta down over here on bookmap is a session volume delta so this just starts generating as soon as the u.s session opens and this is just showing about uh, aggressive buying and selling this is uh cumulative so it's showing um buyers who are willing to step up and pay seller prices to get into the market and sellers who are willing to to uh, um, uh, lower their prices in order to get in on short so right now it seems like buyers are stepping up trying to get in aggressively um, and so that's just an aggressive sign, a, a bullish sign in the market. But again, we still are red. Technicals are look, looking like to the downside. So let's let some structure build on the morning. Um, and we'll see if we can't find an opportunity. Uh, VWAP up here at 4. That's VWAP. Uh, we got to, I think I messed up some of my settings here when I was screwing with my charts. But um, this is, you can see the this VWAP is not showing properly. We can look at it daily. Oh, it's so bright. Pushing right off of the 20 SMA on the daily uh, down here. Uh, and if you also, if you've been watching uh, the streams, you know the 20 SMA on the daily is a significant level of support. So I think we're finding some support off of that. You know, if we break pre-market lows though, you know, it's looking at, you know, the 300 level, you can see it down here. And then you got the 200 SMA, which is this blue dotted line down here. Moving up though, again, Delta is you know revealing a little bit of the market's intention. Uh, coming over to the one hour chart, we can see significant resistance up here at 432, 430. That might be where she wants to go. I'm not gonna chase it up here. I'm just trying to get my bearings on what the market might want to do. And I'm probably gonna come back and look at it in about 10, 15 minutes and see if it's kind of made a decision or if it's leaning one way or the other. Um, or if we're still trying to figure out our identity on the morning. All right, let's see what happens with it. Okay, guys, so we are back looking at this thing. I think the downside's opened up on it. Um, I'm thinking 300 is where it wants to go. We're trading Apex Trader Evaluation on the live streams this week, um, so I'm just going to continue trading that. I'm looking to try to find a short. This thing is just dropping. You can just see it, see it, see it. I can't get an entry on it. Um gonna try to get in sometimes you can find an LVN uh, this is a session volume profile if you can find an LVN on here or some sort of bearish action to the downside you know um, sorry bearish price action there's a little LVN here hmm I don't want to short the bottom of it but I definitely don't want to miss the move a little down channel maybe if it comes back up to like 4450 somewhere around here I don't know if I'm gonna be able to it may just move without you. Delta still has not gone crazy negative on the day, that's for sure. Now it's starting to move up. We're looking for an opportunity. I need a... You just got to jump in down here, maybe. Your stop up here, anticipate that move down to 300, maybe even lower at the bottom of the band down here at 61. I really don't like seeing my uh, trades on the screen here. <clears throat> Might add to it up here, like 43, 40, top of this. I'm gonna look for some bearish action right here. I 
add to it there, right at that trend line. Tempted to move your stop to break even, right? But gosh, I feel like I feel like it's got more room down. Hesitating a little bit here, isn't it? The close out. I really can't stand these trades on my screen. It drives me nuts. I don't know what happened when I changed my chart setup. It reset everything. Dang it. Should have held that short. Let's see if we can get back in on it. Well, we successfully shorted the bottom of it there. All right, let's see what happens with it. Well, um, this was a horrible, horrible entry for me. And that kind of sums up the way that I've been trading lately. It seems like I'm really chasing price. I see cumin of Delta here moving up. There could be some price absorption going on. The buyers may try to be stepping in here and this thing's just gonna tank. Technicals look way to the downside. It's just so much hesitation on. I would have been to take profit there. Um, I'm gonna really just wait for a better entry. Um, wait for maybe like a five minute pullback, get a bearish candle and then try to take it short again. You know, if it moves without me, it moves without me, but um, I can't be short in the bottom of it. Now we see these sellers coming in. Uh, my original take profit on this was down here at the bottom of the band on the uh, one minute. But really when you're trading these um, you know, mini contracts and these evaluations, you really got to be a, have sniper entries. And this entry was just horrible. Oftentimes NASDAQ will make a break like that, you know, break support, and then we'll roll back up to resistance and then roll back down. And so I really need to be more patient with it. And um, I'm just going to let it move around for a minute and try to find a better entry. All right, guys. <clears throat> so what has happened on this bad boy? Well, we're in this down channel here uh, on the open, trading that down channel, and we broke that down channel. Came all the way down here to 95. Took some shorts. Um, not f not really for anything particularly special, I would say. Broke out of this down channel, and uh, we are 5,000, almost six. We're, we popped through 6,000 Delta. I mean, it looks bullish on this. Like, Delta looks bullish. Technicals look bearish. Delta's lo Delta looks bullish. Order flow looks bullish. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to trade. You know, I see this bearish candle here in the five minute. You're know, like, maybe we're going to roll back down. But look where point of control is. Point of control is closer to a uh, value area low. When you see point of control coming in near a value area low, or if it was up here, value, a value area high, typically price isn't going to want to move away. Um, it's getting a lot of volume down here. It's going to want to move away from that area, typically back into value, um, which is this area, right? Yeah, so that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, you know, if we look at the one minute, it's almost kind of like a little bit of a pullback up to VWAP, right? You get a little bit of a down channel here, break that down channel, pop up to VWAP. 
Um, that could be a possible trade. We just got a bearish candle there on the one minute. Let's take a look if we can see. Uh, yeah, we're getting that pop there. Try to take a little scalp here unless this thing is going to be a false breakout. But you'd expect it to continue to rise up. Let's see. See if we can get a scalp out of it. Maybe we're chasing it now to the upside, which I wouldn't be totally surprised at the way I've been trading this week. But we'll try to see if we can't get this scalp out of it. I'll take profit there. Only trading one contract, guys. Uh, we just took profit on that big that pop. The top of the band there would would have been your take um, your price target on it. Maybe we're gonna get another move up, but I don't know. It's probably gonna find some resistance up here now. Point of control has come up where near value area high. Let's see what it wants to do. We just talked about that. Um, are we gonna want to move away here, or are we gonna break out of value area high, break VWAP, break 20 SMA in the five minute, and go completely um, into um, value area high? This would be out of balance. Typically, if we get out of balance like that, it's gonna want to trend up, and we might get that trend up to 400, uh, probably higher, probably come up to 430, I would suspect. Now we're starting to move up a little bit more. Let's see if we break 72. Looks like for now it's looking bullish. Every time I'm clicking on this thing, it keeps pulling up my indicator list, which is frustrating. I'm going to move over a 2000 tick chart just so that I can see this a little bit better. Um, this is an overnight session volume profile. I keep squishing my candles over there on the 500, 500 volume chart. Now we're moving back down a little bit. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Mmm. Bearish candle on the one minute. Maybe we break through here. I, I don't know. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Should be happy with 228 on the day on one contract, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's see what it wants to do up here. So we just took a VWAP uh, break scalp. Um, you're going to get a pop off of VWAP um, as a bunch of shorts get taken out. Uh, it might have room up here to 400, 410. I don't know. We've now kind of gone out of balance on the session. you got to keep in mind, though, that this is a you know, session volume profile. It's only been generating for about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, I should say, 50 minutes. And, uh, you know, we're in an up channel at the moment. We can see it here on the five minute. I'll come up to the top of that channel. So just took a quick pop scalp on that. And maybe now we're going to come up to 400. Maybe, maybe, maybe get in a VWAP retest down here. Um, I don't know. This was this kind of a similar situation we had yesterday. We we're in a up channel. We broke that up channel and rolled down. However, we are pushing off pretty significantly. I mean, it, it could definitely go flat on the day. You know, we're down uh, just over half a percent. It could go to zero, and uh, it's got quite a bit of room that it could go to the upside. Delta is still looking very bullish on it. Um, if we look at Bookmap, we are, you know, positive 3,400 Delta on the session. So that's just showing aggressive buying, and um, it could be that, um, you know, the technicals look short. A lot of people went short on it and just getting squeezed out of this thing. So we'll watch it. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get lucky and find another setup. Um, I don't want to buy the top of this channel though. So let's see if we get a pullback. The place to buy it would be if we come up here, test this area, and we pull back down and you know get it at the bottom of the channel. That's what you want to do. That's uh, had I had to remind myself of that yesterday in the live stream. All right, guys, let's uh, watch it and see what happens. All right, guys, so price broke through this down channel here. We were just talking a second ago about, you know, you don't want to buy the top of the channel. You know, you want to get in on it down here. I'm curious to see what it wants to do down here. We did break to the downside on it. Uh, very similar situation that happened yesterday when we were in that tight up channel moving up in the morning. Um, and then when we once we broke the supporting trend line, 
Um, price just rolled down off of that. We are attempting to find some support down here. If you were a bull, uh, one positive note would be that it closed below the 20 SMA on the one minute, but we have recovered. Uh, typically, if it closes below the 20 SMA on the one minute, it's going to want to come down here and hit the bottom of the band here on, on the one minute. We're kind of just chopping around. Trying to figure out what it wants to do. It looks like you could draw a descending trend line like that. If we break that, break VWAP, I, you know, maybe we come back up here, come back to the top of the channel, but not a good sign that the support level did not hold. Uh, we're in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment to see what it wants to do. If we break 45, you know, it might drop down to third, it might drop down to 40, there might be five points in there. It's funny, like when I'm watching this chart, it's like you're just trying to get a few points and it's it's like how hard can it be just to get a couple points? And it's pretty hard <laughs> to find the to find those opportunities. Those um just just to scalp out a couple points on it. Um you know, you could jump in on it. You know, the price can only go one way or the other, right? It can only go up or it can only go down. And so it's almost like, you know, how, how can you just not get those two or three points out of it? Um, so when you when you put it in perspective like that, it seems like this is a pretty easy thing, but it definitely is not for anyone out there who has traded for any period of time. So... Uh, I'm going to keep watching it here. Definitely looks like it's just about ready to chop up a bunch of folks. Um, so let's see what happens. All right, guys. So we're still watching this thing. Now it's looking pretty bearish. Look at this five-minute candle that closed there, coming off a significant area of resistance. Um, that area of resistance is... Uh, I'll try to take a quick scalp on it. Um, the 20 SMA on the one hour... And it's also uh, the session high. Is this session high? Yeah, session high. Popped up there. Session high right after uh, the market opened and collapsed down from it. Um, so the shorts we took over here looked like we were just going to fall out of the sky. Found support. And uh, we made this up channel in the five minute. We had a failed higher high as we broke lower. Tried to make a higher high here, came again back up to the 20 SMA on the hourly, um, and just a really significant level of resistance up here. I took a just a real quick scalp here for a hundred bucks. Um, as price was just moving away, you just see that bearish candle, it's gonna find maybe some support down here at 45 ish. I don't know, down here value. This is a session, uh, sorry, an overnight session, um, volume profile with a value area low on that. But if we look over here on, um, the actual session volume profile you know we got more room to the downside that it could definitely fall uh, maybe down to 36 let's see what it wants to do around this 50 level uh, might be able to pick up another quick scalp as it breaks lower here i don't know if i want to short the bottom of the one minute band though again you know you can see the support here that it found it's just looking really choppy i mean when we were trading um right around here as we broke that channel um, it looked like we were going to roll down to value area low down to around the 30s and we broke higher and actually made a new high well not a new session high but a new high over here and then rolled down off of that so it's chopping up a lot of folks um, that five minute bearish candle though for me is um very uh, concerning for bulls, I would say, particularly off of this key level of resistance that we just talked about. So, I don't know. Um, this might be uh, the tra all the trading I do for today at 572 on a Friday. It's about 940. Europe's going to close here um, in about 45 minutes. And we may get a big move this afternoon, like around 2 o'clock, something like that. Um, you may see a big, you know, uh, push going into the close. Now we're breaking lower here. And we're going to come down to 30. Um, but I'm probably going to call it quits, at least for now. I'm going to get on with the rest of my day um, and be happy with, you know, it's not a grand slam today, but it's not a decent, it's, it's not a, you know, bad day. It's decent. It's fine. Particularly after kind of a rocky week um, on the live stream. Speaking of that, if you guys are interested, we are going to be live streaming next week, every morning, 
um, on beginning on Tuesday, because Monday is a bank holiday here in the U.S. It's President's Day. Markets will be closed, um, so we will not be trading on Monday. However, we will be live streaming on uh, Tuesday. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us um, uh, then. Um, if you're interested in doing any prop firm evaluations, if you're interested in trading products, things like that, check out the description below. There are some affiliate links down there that'll save you some money. You also help support the channel um, if you use any of those. So saves saves you some money, helps support the channel, win-win, and I appreciate it. All right, guys, you guys have a great weekend, and hopefully I will see you back here on the channel soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like all that stuff. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.